for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Martin Heuser. I work at Julian Doki as a senior Microsoft 365 engineer. And I live in Stefa, which is near Zurich in Switzerland. Switzerland. I'm a Microsoft 365 Apps and Services MVP. And on the right side, you can see some of my favorite technologies I like to work and tinker with. So today we're going to talk about dark effects and why it's awesome. Also, what are kind of the, the challenges or the stepping stones to get started with working with this tool? Um, what did I do to make it easier for you to get started if you've never worked with it before? And we're going to talk about where you can host a DockerFabs generated uh, website. And of course, there will be a demo time. These are the technologies that's, that have been used in this project. So we got SharePoint Online, DockerFabs, PowerShell, and the awesome PMP PowerShell module, which is really helpful for all things SharePoint Online and PowerShell. So uh, DockerFax, it's a open source static website generator, which is maintained by the .NET Foundation. And the way it works is you basically have some markdown files, which are just plain text files with some very light and easy to learn syntax, which in the end generates HTML files um, uh, or a website containing HTML files from said markdown files. And the output you'll see will look very similar to what you can see, for example, on learn.microsoft.com or also many other uh, documentation websites out there. Uh, why I think it's an awesome uh, tool or why documenting in Markdown is one of the best things ever is that you get a single source for all of your docs. Um, you can change all the, uh, you can track all the changes with Git, no matter if they're stored in a GitHub repo or in Azure DevOps repo or whatever Git repository you use, you'll be able to track all the changes and uh, contact content is always in, in uh, plain text, so it's very easy to migrate it to another tool, to another solution or whatever. You can easily manipulate the text. For example, if you have like a name change or something else like IP addresses or whatever changes inside your technical documentation, just read the files into uh, memory with PowerShell and you can manipulate, replace and do everything in an automated way instead of going through each document manually. Um, you can do uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment if you set that up later once you build the site. And it's just a very great um, user experience if uh, consumers of that documentation can read and uh, learn uh, about your product or about your internal IT uh, environment on a website. So they'll have search functionality, they'll be able to create and share links to articles or even to sections within articles and all that stuff. And uh, if you're a little bit more advanced with Markdown, you can also reuse content across uh, different articles. So if you have like sections which are always going to be the same, um, you could just uh, reference that part and you only need to change it in, in one uh, file if, if something changes. The, so I've been working with DocFX for a couple of years now. Uh, I'm building my own documentation websites. And um, there is a, a learning curve for Markdown syntax, so you have to um, learn how you can create titles, tables, uh, how links work and everything. And you also need to take a look at the YAML structure. Like, uh, this is where you create uh, the table of content files uh, so that every or all the links of your website work properly. And you have to figure out how the folder structure inside your um, project works. And of course, if you want to um, publish that website anywhere. You'll need to. You'll need some basic web hosting or, or service skills to get that website published. Now, um, because of all these challenges I initially faced, I decided to create uh, some PowerShell scripts, which will greatly help you to get started. So um, instead of just creating a vanilla DockerFX project, you can use a script to generate a pre-populated folder structure from a CSV. So you'll be able to define your categories and subcategories and everything. And um, the folder structure, all the YAML files, all the references and everything will be um, automatically created for you by the script. And there's also a script to um, upload and update that content if you decide to put your DocFX page on SharePoint Online. And then as an experiment, I'm also working on some PowerShell functions to just make the certain things a little bit easier, like creating uh, links to images and stuff like that. I'll show that in the demo as well. So it's in the end, once you've generated the site, it's just a static website, so you can host it on any web server really. 
Um, you can put it on GitHub pages or Azure App Service, static web app, uh, or even SharePoint online with a few tweaks. That's what I'm going to show you. Um, if you decide to put it on SharePoint, you'll have no additional hosting fees because you don't need a server. Um, you'll have built-in authentication from Azure AD already, and you can use your uh, or leverage your existing permission structures. Like if you have a team and the team already has members, there's no need to um, assign more permissions or whatever. And one of the coolest coolest things is that the, your documentation content will be uh, indexed and searchable across all micro, Microsoft 365 apps or even Windows start menu search if you have that um, set up as well. So let's go to the repository. So everything is available on uh, GitHub. You can just clone the repository and there's also a accompanying documentation website. Um, I'll show that later if we still have time. So once you've uh, cloned the repository from GitHub, it will look like this. We have a few folders and we have uh, some, some PowerShell scripts uh, in these. But first I want to show you how it would look like if you decide to just um, create a vanilla project with doc effects. Um, so you, uh, on, on the docs website, I just mentioned uh, everything is noted, what tools you need to install and everything. Of course, I already have everything pre-installed for the demo. So we do it like this, just um, docfx in it, and then specify the output folder, and this will um, generate the project under the docs folder. And now you can see there are some markdown files, which and some YAML files and stuff. Um, but what I want to show you is how that looks in the web browser. If we decide to um, surf that website locally, preview it. So this is going to create a site folder, which is the output, which is also what you would put on a server. Now we can see there is not much on there. That's just how it works when, when you get started with Doc Effects. So you need to figure out everything yourself if you're not using um, my script. So it's pretty empty and we just have two uh, categories here in, in the horizontal nav bar. So let's close that, go back here, and we can delete this folder again. Now there is a structure, uh, structure CSV file. Um, you can put in all the categories um, you would want to have on your documentation. So this is kind of or kind of assumes you want to document your internal uh, IT uh, environment or cloud environment. So you have a couple of Azure stuff in here, Microsoft 365 with subcategories of Teams, SharePoint, Exchange, etc. Uh, so yeah, let's just go to um, our initialized docfx um, script, which is the script that will uh, create the docfx project for us. Um, we'll have to give it a name. Let's just call that demo docs. That's the only parameter that's needed. And now you can see it created a docs folder again. But if I surf that page, we'll see that it's already got way more uh, content in there. The browser, and now we can see all the categories we have. For subcategories, we have them structured in sub uh, menus which can be expanded and collapsed and there is like a, a demo or an empty file in for each category so we have the breadcrumbs as well uh, yeah um, now let's say we don't want this call flows part here we don't need that so what we can do is just close the server beat the folder again go back to our csv remove that line and regenerate the whole thing again surf that again so you can do this as many times as you like until you're happy with uh, the, the structure you laid out now you can see the call flows uh, menu is gone now um under the the build folder there is another script called build docfx for SharePoint Online. And this is a script which uses uh, the, the PMP partial module. And if we go back to docs and site, we can see that we have all these HTML files. So basically for every article, um, there is a uh, HTML file. So all the markdown was converted to HTML. And the thing with SharePoint Online is that it doesn't support HTML. It needs to be ASPX. There are a couple of blog posts out there which mention that you need to rename them. 
And that's basically what um, this script does is it renames all the HTML file to ASPX so they can um, run interactively on SharePoint. Now I'm going to run that script, which will do the same. It will build the website again. And then all the files will be uh, renamed. Now it will start um, uploading to uh, SharePoint Online, but we can actually uh, stop that because for the sake of the demo, I've already uploaded everything. So uh, we don't have to wait for all the files to be uploaded. Now we have basically the same content running on SharePoint Online, as you can see from, from the address bar. It's also pretty quick. Uh, so let's go back here. Let's just clear that. And now I want to add some uh, content to our documentation. So we go back to uh, articles and let's go to index. Let's remove that. Now uh, there is the, the functions. They are inside uh, this script. I've already imported them. So all I need to do to add something is to say, uh, let's uh, add an image. So I want a new docfx image link. Um, it says no new image is found. But what it did is it created a uh, image index file, which basically is just a text file that stores all the images that are there. Now I copy this little raccoon image to the attachments folder. I run that again. Now I have. Now, now I have the, the a markdown compatible image link path in my clipboard, and I can just paste it uh, into my uh, file. And I also want to do some other stuff. Uh, add part PMP demo, which will create a note, and it also includes another file, which is uh, located here. So that's what I meant when I said we can reuse content across site because we can just use this include part. Uh, now let's go back to uh, the build docker for SPO script. What this also does is it renames the, the last build folder, folder to site last build and then generates a new one and it compares the file hashes so that it knows which files have changed and it only uploads the changed files to SharePoint so we don't need to upload the whole site every time, which makes it just much more efficient. Now we can see um, which files have changed and which files are new. So if we go search for new, we can see Raccoon JPEG is new. And if we go back to our uh, SharePoint site, we should refresh that and we can see the Raccoon is here. And we can also see the other content um, that uh, was read from the other file. Yeah, and everything is working, so search as well. Everything is uh, searchable uh, within SharePoint, so everything is working as if this web page was running on any other server. So very quick um, recap. If you want to get started with this, um, first you need to um, define your categories in a CSV file. Then you need to run the initialized docfx project um, to lay out the folder structure, write your documentation content, and then uh, review the, the content by previewing and verifying the site locally, and then you can publish it to a SharePoint or a web server. And this is my contact card. So I'm very active on Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, I blog on Medium, and of course, uh, I provide the, the code I write on, on GitHub. So that's it from me, and back to you, David. Awesome stuff again, Martin. Very, very cool. I, I love how quickly you're able to show implementing and the benefits as well within uh, using it in SharePoint DocFX. So really, really great job. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of collaborative uh, questions for you. Mm -hmm.